1917 was one of the best movies of 2019 and is in my opinion one of the best war films ever made. But yet it garnered criticism for the lack of backstory and development it provided for its main characters. The film's plot is simplistic in nature following two young British soldiers, Tom Blake played by Dean Charles Chapman and William Schofield played by George Mackay. Blake and Schofield are ordered to deliver a message to another part of the Western Front to call off an attack that will save 1600 men including Blake's brother. Notably, the film is shot as being one long take, with the camera looking over the two main characters' shoulders as they accelerate the story in real time, with director Sam Mendes and cinematographer Roger Deakins wanting to immerse the audience in this world and the perils of World War I. You're always moving forward. You never go back. Because of this, there's no time to clearly tell us the characters' backstories, and this is where some critics find issues with the movie, saying that with little backstory and by making the characters blank slates, the heart of 1917 is missing, and that Blake and Schofield lack individuality. But I disagree. In K.M. Wyland's creating character arcs, a character arc is the inner journey a character experiences over the course of a story, and can often be categorized as negative, where the character sees the truth but rejects it to embrace a lie, flat, where the character doesn't change, or positive, where the protagonist starts in a state of denial and is forced to challenge his beliefs about himself and the world. Think Walter White, Wonder Woman, and in 1917's case, Schofield. For Schofield, this lends itself to his beliefs on the war effort, where his traumatizing experiences so far have caused him to forget about the goodness in humanity and the feelings of love and belonging with his family. Brilliantly played by Mackay, Schofield is a one-man canvas onto which the horrors of war are painted, and in the space of half a day, his backstory is subtly revealed as he endures the extremes of the human experience and his arc develops. At the beginning of the film, Schofield is dismissive of others. Hey, command. Bring your kit. Closing his eyes after hearing Blake told to pick a man, as he feels there is no point connecting with anyone, as the war will just take away those relationships through death. It's these subtle cues that reveal so much about his backstory. After Blake chooses Schofield and they had delivered their orders, we get glimpses of what Schofield's journey has been so far. He won't look at photos, he doesn't want mail from home, and he's scarred by a prior campaign that went wrong. Blake. Let's talk about this for a minute. Why? We see him doubting the reason for their mission, afraid of being exposed to more trauma and wanting to wait. Look, the last time I was told the Germans were gone, it didn't end well. You don't know, Blake. You weren't there. Making it across Dead Man's Land and into the Germans' line, Schofield nearly dies after an explosion buries him in rubble before being saved by Blake. You're going to have to jump! This reiterates his hatred for the war effort, and the reason why he's lost faith in human connection, saying, Why in God's name did you have to choose me? And with subtlety, we also see him look at a photo from his jacket after his near-death experience. We see later that Schofield won a Medal of Valor, but he valued it so little that he traded it to a Frenchman for a bottle of wine. And here he finally opens up to Blake. He tearfully expresses how painful it is to go home on leave, knowing that he'll just have to return to the front again. When I knew I had to leave, and they might never see me. Only at the very end of the film is it revealed that he has a wife and young children waiting for him back home. After the pair finally begin to bond, Blake is tragically stabbed trying to save a downed German pilot. We should put him out of his misery. No! Get him some water! He needs water! The camera circles around the pair, showing their worlds thrust into chaos as Blake's death nears. With perfect performances from Mackay and Chapman, we get a touching moment where with Blake's final movements, he asks to see the photo he carries of his family. It's this moment that is a turning point and revelation for Schofield, realizing that at the other side of this war effort, goodness within people still exists. His family awaits him, and that this fragile life should be appreciated, whether it's picking cherry blossoms or laughing about rats. From here, Schofield ends up being forced to take over the responsibilities of the mission, now driven by this desire for his family. We see it in him trying to push the truck out of the muddy tracks and persevering after being shot in the head by a soldier at a coost. 
Later, his emotional response is finally triggered when he encounters a French woman who's caring for an abandoned baby in the bombed out ruins. And we see Schofield lavish his entire stash of hoarded rations, a collection he'd hidden even from Blake. The woman asks if he has children, and he doesn't answer her question. He's too engrossed in singing the child a rhyme, like he's singing to his own child, offering greater exposure to the love of others within this chaotic world he lives in. Far and few. Far and few are the lands where the Jumpties live. Moments later, he's strangling a German soldier to death with his bare hands, and he escapes further German resistance by leaping into a river and going over a waterfall. He's exhausted, and he lets the water take him, thinking he can die in peace, only to be surrounded by cherry blossoms, which remind him of Blake. This is another moment of commitment to Schofield's new self, and he spurs back into life. He washes up at his metaphorical, intended destination of dying in the war, where he shuns this fate and crawls over it before breaking down. <laughs> Emerging from the river after a baptismal episode of death and rebirth, he finds the Devons and sees what he has to get through to save Blake's brother and the 1600 men. Thomas Newman's score builds as Schofield has to get through hundreds of men. He's faced with soldiers hungry to make the push and others who fear it. Yet Schofield remains strong. He knows he only has one choice and he's willing to risk his life to get back to his family. Schofield runs without fear and through bombardment to deliver the message in what is one of the best war sequences I've ever seen and it always makes me cry. Without any glamorization, after all he's been through, his reward for completing his mission is Colonel McKenzie telling him to fuck off. I've summoned CT wounds. I fuck off, Lance Corporal. Reflecting the harsh realities of the soldier experience on the Western Front. Well done, Matt. Thank you, sir. Schofield finds Blake's brother Joseph, played by Richard Madden. We can see that upon hearing of Tom's death, he's lost everything, consumed by the war. Despite being ordered away, Schofield tells Joseph that Tom wasn't alone. He was a good man, always telling funny stories. He saved my life. To which Joseph says, oh, I'm glad you were with him. Thank you, Will. It's these words that confirm to Schofield that he's still capable to connect with others, highlighting the end of his denial and the start of his transformation. After his valiant efforts, he finally gets a moment of bliss under a tree, to which he looks at photos of his wife and family, staring at the words of his wife, come back to us. The harsh irony is that after all these events and having cut open his hand and accidentally placing it in a dead corpse at the start of the movie, he must survive eight more months and high risk of infection in the war to get back to them. And even if he does, Schofield is supposed to go back to his wife and kids and merely carry on with his life as normal? The film has hundreds of explosions and thousands of background players, but only one and a half characters, making its main character count. Through subtle cues, lines, and expressions by Mackay, 1917 masterfully provides us Schofield's backstory, with so much complexity packed into the character in so little time. The long take structure isn't the best part, it's Schofield's positive arc. Thanks for watching this episode of Cinemaze. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and let me know what you thought down in the comments. Also, please let me know which characters you would like me to do next.